At least do the take. At least. What's that? I said at least do, like, start going. Oh, yeah, that's the key. So, like, I, I don't that's the key to a good podcast. You start going. All right, Tyree, welcome. Oh, what's going on, everybody? How, how's life? Oh, life is perfect. You know what I was thinking about the other day, before you even got here, was that 10 years, high school anniversary. Or no, is that what you call it, anniversary? Yeah, I would say 10-year anniversary. Are you going to plan it? Hell no. <laughs> I don't want that responsibility. 10 years, man. Time flies. <sighs> Does it ever? Are you a different guy? Um, I would say in a positive way, but like, I'm still the overall the same person I was in high school, yeah. junior high, elementary. Yeah. I stay the same throughout. Yeah. You learn a lot more life lessons as time goes. I think we're learning from your mistakes, but from high school, like if you think about it, if you woke up in high school today, the amount of mistakes that you would make back then compared to now would be so different. Oh, for sure. That's what I've probably learned the most. You just learn from mistakes and just keep going. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I love it. So what about you, man? How's life? I see you're modeling. You're an influencer. Essentially, that's that's what you want to be in 2019. It seems like everyone that's doing well in life is an influencer. Yeah, I mean, in some kind of way, like, uh, you know, I, I started doing it about a year and a half ago. And it's, it's gone really well. Um, it's, it's brought me a lot of new relationships. Yeah. And uh, i just been loving it, man. Yeah. It's fun. So I, I, I guess you could say that that's what I want to do in 2019. But essentially, I just want to uh, express myself in a positive way. Yeah. Try to be very creative and uh, just see where the future takes me. Outside of that, what do you like to do? Uh, outside of that, uh, I like to go to the gym, of course. I like to swim. Uh, you know, just take it easy, watch Netflix. Like yeah. I'm a pretty simple guy, to be honest with you. I just do the essential things that everybody would do during a day speaking of high school in the gym that's a high school reunion at that gym up there the, oh. the, the amount of people i ran into up there i haven't seen since high school yeah i don't need to go to the reunion i can just talk to people up there like yeah. how you been what's new exactly it's funny because um i live on the same street as uh, scott preston actually oh yeah so i see him every other day hey good morning man how's it going we're going to work at the same time so how's he doing like, he's doing good man yeah he, he got in a nice little spot there so it's, it's chill that's just funny. around the corner like five minute drive from here. so are you up in park west still uh no it? no actually uh i was on farm gate and parkland drive like that's like that's that, that's a spot like that, yeah. that's where i grew up outside of like when i moved from the pubs yeah but uh yeah and then i moved up by the west actually but that's when i was away when yeah i was in newfoundland yeah but now i just live down the road like um like rockingham okay rockingham area that's where i grew up before here birdland oh, okay. all, all yeah, the yeah. names of the streets are named after birds yes yeah, so we call it birdland like jasper grew up there yeah Alex Bird grew now. up yeah. there it was a great place to grow up not much has changed there it stayed the same that's the thing i kind of like about the community it's the same but those apartment buildings up on dumbrack those blowing are up, man. Those are going up. Blowing up. Have I remember seen? when uh, the first one was being built is when I moved back, and that one's pretty much done now. I'm Wait, like, which shit, one, sorry? Flew in. Uh, the one right on the road of Dumbrack. Okay, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. That big one that they've been working on, so it's crazy. Oh, it's like a whole new subdivision now. Yeah. Whole new one. Whole new subdivision. Blowing they got a up. Sobeys, a liquor store. I know. Sobeys, actually. Well, no, Sobeys. Uh, Express. Like to go. Express. Yeah. As soon as a liquor store goes in somewhere, you know that there's plans to be like development. Yeah. Like shit's going up everywhere. For sure. For sure. Um, all right. So that's sick. So you're out of high school, obviously. You're modeling. Uh, what are you doing for the nine to five? That nine to five. Uh, so I was doing, ever since I graduated, uh, I did my uh, bachelor of business. Yeah. That's what I did in school. I did up in mine. Uh, shout out to Seahawks because that's what it is. It's gang gang. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, uh, in all seriousness, um, I work at NSCC now, but I was in uh, the financial industry. Okay. I was doing banking for three years. Yeah. Um, I graduated in 2015. I took the five year route, you know, had my had my fun, you know. Fifth year. Fifth year. Did Fifth you year like graduate. mine? I love mine. Yeah. I love mine. And uh, it's crazy because I haven't been there in over a year now. It's just like I'm, you know, homesick in a way because it was actually like my second home. And, I, yeah. I, you know, I know it just as well as I know Halifax now, it seems. So definitely missing it. Did you live on campus or did you have your own place when you were up at Mon? I only lived on campus for maybe the first year and a half. Um, I lived on Newtown Road. Like that was the road I was living in. Uh, 130, 134 Newtown, 94 Newtown. Uh, 78 Newtown like these are just yeah I was on the same street just hop into different you know how, what I mean how far is that from George buddies. Street um everything there's pretty close like it's, it's really small so I would say it's about five minutes five minute drive maybe like a 15 minute walk 20 minute walk so today for example we had a shitload of snow yeah what's rain. the weather I heard the weather up there is 10 times worse have you been 
part of something up there where you've been like snowed in like real canadian winters yeah i remember the first year actually when uh i was in my first semester i was living in rothmere that's the campus up there yeah and uh it was igor it was hurricane igor do you remember that oh yes i do yeah way, yeah way yeah. back when and uh i remember i was in my dorm rooms then and it was it was like you literally only had like maybe four feet uh a space between like you're the person that you're bunking yeah, with. Okay, okay. And I just remember we're like we're trying to sleep, and then all of a sudden a tree just comes and goes through the the uh, the whole wall. Your dorm? Wall. Like in my dorm. dorm? Yeah, right there. Like it, a tree. Like was it huge. the middle of the night? It was in the middle of the night, like early morning, maybe like six a.m., seven a.m. No. We were getting ready to go to sc- yeah, we were getting ready to go to school and stuff, and then the power went off, and it was just it was a mess. What year and was I, this? Your first year when this you were was in my the dorm? First year. So this would have been when was this? <laughs> this would have been. Maybe December, November, twenty ten. November twenty ten. Think about Eight, nine that. years ago. Yeah, man, I was a young buck. That's hilarious. Yeah. Did you play any sports up there? Yeah, I played basketball actually for two years. Um, with this with the Seahawks and uh, my knees kind of gave out in third year, and uh, uh. The doctor kind of said because I had problems with my knees in in high school. Oh, you when you were West. younger. Yeah, so I just had to give it up. Unfortunately, it sucks, but. Yeah, At least you got to play university ball. Most people don't get to say that. Yeah, no, you know it, was, I mean? it was good. It was good. And uh, the coach was really hard on us. So it wasn't like it was not easy yeah. by any means. Like, you know, 6 a.m. waking up. Yeah. Like, I went through all that. And uh, I miss it sometimes. You know what? I think about it sometimes. I miss it. But I'm just like, I can't go back to school now. Why, why can't you go back? Well, I guess I could. But, like, I'm just where my life is going from here i just feel like if i go back to school um you know i kind of it would be a lot of setback for me Mm. you know in a way and uh you know maybe in the future i will but like i won't i wouldn't go back and like play ball i think yeah i hung that jersey out that's fair one thing i definitely learned about school i probably learned a lot about myself during school not so much the actual education factor of it and i know some people listening might think that's wrong but I took away from school, yeah, who I was as a person, how I dealt with people, how I handled situations, how I came out of adversity. If where I remember having a group project for the very first time, and it was four Asian girls that didn't know how to speak English very well, yeah. and myself. And I remember being in the group and just thinking, this is what it's going to be like in real life. When you want to network, when you want to be in sales, if you want to market something, there's going to be people that don't have the best communication skills. So you just kind of learn to deal with things like that, especially at SMU where there were so many... A lot of international, a lot of international students. So there was definitely frustrating times when it came to like group studies, I guess. Oh, definitely. But I think like guys like you and I, when you play sports, I, that's one thing I hate about this podcast is that I always talk about sports and how it relates to real life. But it's so true. You just learn to do work with people. You know what I mean? Definitely. I'm sure there's people on your basketball team you didn't get along with, but you still have to work with them. You still have to be on the same team. You still have to strive for the same goal. And that's just kind of the same way I look at life. There's tons of scenarios on a day-to-day basis where I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do this with this person, but you have to do it. That's exactly. probably what I took most about school. For sure. And I think that, uh, you know, speaking back to sports, like you said, um, I feel that, you know, you can be an introvert as yourself, but you have to be able to talk to people. You have to yeah. be able to associate and be cool with people and have that kind of conversations and connections, essentially, especially. And that goes right back to sports, especially if you're a success, successful with sports. Yeah, that's what you know it takes. True story. I'm sitting in class. This was at NSCC, actually. What campus are you at, by the way? Uh, the main campus. Dartmouth? So, no, Lee Street. Okay, it changed, okay. It changed, it changed okay, apparently okay. a couple years ago. I don't know. So, I'm over in Dartmouth. This is maybe four or five years ago. And I was an introverted person back then. Not the most talkative person. I remember sitting there at the end of the class. It was time to pick groups. It's like, all right, everyone just pick your group. Everyone, you know, you know how that is, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember just like hesitating for a second. I'm like, all right, man, who's going to be in my group? How am I going to do this? And one guy walks up to me. It was probably like the fourth, fifth day of school. He goes, you're Justin, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm Justin. He goes, you're an introvert. You're an introverted person. I know everybody here and I don't know you. He said that to me. The guy, wow. the kid on the had balls to come that's, up. Yeah, like, that's bold. You're an introverted person. You, I know everyone and don't know you. And I remember from that moment on, I was just like, okay, I, if people are noticing, I got to change something. And ever since that moment, I was just, I got to start being more outgoing. Well, do you feel like you just weren't trying to, you know, make friends in school? Were you just so focused? You just... I think I was still in the hockey mentality of all I want to do is talk to hockey people. I think it was a little bit of arrogance on my part. I think it was a little bit of, yeah, cockiness and just thinking I'm better. It It was a lot of that. Yeah, for sure. It happens. You know, and then going into school, the transition from hockey to school to real life. 
you know, stuff like that. I wasn't a huge fan of it. How did you deal with when sports was over? Like, if your knees go out, oh, that would suck. It was brutal, like my meniscus. I don't what's know. What's your, what's that? Me. Like, it's a, a ligament actually between the two bones. It's what supports, like, kind of like a cushion. And it happened on both? It, both, bro. Freak. A grade 11 in one of them. Um, <laughs> and the other one in uh, second, that, the, was it second year? High Which school? Year, second, second year university. Oh. So uh, one was in high school in grade 11. And the other one was in university. And I had surgeries on both and came back. But even still, like, it, it felt like I was just kept re-injuring it. And I just, I was like, you know what? Uh, you know, the doctor essentially said, do you want to be able to hike with your kids when you're 40 and 50? I was like, hell yeah. He's like, well, cool. you got to stop playing ball. I was like, okay. Isn't that an interesting perspective that you have to make that decision it at, is, like, 22? It, it, but yeah, but, I mean, you got to look at the long term, you know. But that's I, hard to do for some people. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's all about impulse. You know, it's really hard to fight impulse sometimes. Have you ever dunked a basketball? Of course. Of course. I could probably still dunk a basketball. Could you? For, yeah, for sure. I would for do sure. many things to dunk a basketball. Yeah. But like in Madison Square Garden, like. No, I'm not breaking. Like I can't just go. or like You can't like LeBron it? Like, no, like, most I can't do anything. Can. I could probably just like squeeze it in with one hand right now. <laughs> uh, in my prime, maybe I could do two hands, but like not too, too much. Like, you know, I'm only like I'm under six foot. I'm like 5'11". Who was the guy? Nate Robinson. Yeah, he's freak of nature. Five eight, five eight, and he won the dunk contest. How yeah. many times? Uh, three. Don't quote me. <laughs> three, three. I don't know. <laughs> I would say three, two or three. I don't know. How old were you when you can dunk a ball uh, for the first time? I, I think the first time was at um, it was at Kings, Kings, the the gym down at Kings by. Uh, oh yeah, by Dow there. Yeah, by Dow by Studley, and uh, I think I might have been in grade. Grade ten going in grade eleven, summertime grade ten going eleven. What an exciting time! It was it was fun, yeah. Was fun. <laughs> but no, I, I couldn't do it like consistently um, until university, of course. But and, wait, so ten, eleven? Did you were your knees bad at that time too? Uh not really. No, no, no. It wasn't until grade eleven when I I messed it up and then I had to wear a knee brace in grade twelve. But I I was able to like still like hoop and and yeah. be good enough to still get you know the recognition to go yeah. up to mine and play ball up there and stuff. But it's there, a, no, you go. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say it was unfortunate because like when the first, my first and second year, I was playing with all like senior guys in the fifth year. So when I would just come in, and like I'll, I'll tell this to the viewers and stuff, like I'm I was a scorer. That's what I did. I put the but I put the ball in the bucket. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, I love shooting threes and and you know getting buckets like that. Uh, and when it was time to play defense, I played defense and stuff. But that's what I did. I wasn't really good at passing. Yeah, you know, um, I put some. You know, I was a hustler kind of player and stuff. Like I you yeah. know, put my body and stuff out there, but just get buckets. <laughs> that's that's what I was about. What do you think the NBA? Uh, do you think the NBA is in a good spot right now about getting buckets? Because it seems that in order to be an elite team in the NBA now, all you have to do is shoot threes. That's from someone that doesn't know much about the game of basketball that's looking outside is that somewhat accurate oh it's spot on i i mean like you're seeing more bigger guys that are like power forwards and centers that are shooting threes and that are able to shoot threes and get it in you know i can't hate they're getting it in and stuff but it's just i guess it kind of takes away from the game because like you're so used to seeing you know positions being able to master what they're doing you know point guards like true point guards like i mean you know i could go on about this but like Jason Kidd or Steve Nash, they're true point guards, as opposed to uh, Stephen Curry. Um, he's not really a true point guard per se, because he's more of a scoring type of point guard. You know, he's good at passing and stuff, but he's not like a true point guard. So it's just, you know, can, I, no, you, can you explain what a true point guard is? Because when you talk about a point guard, all I know is Steph Curry. I don't know what S Steve Nash's game was like. Yeah. Or, okay. So like a true point guard. So S Stephen Curry, he basically bases his game off of um, shot, his shot. You know yeah. what I mean? And he's a wonderful shooter. He can shoot from anywhere. He has unlimited range and stuff. And that's all fine to Danny. But when I say true point guard, like, you know, Steve Nash or Jason Kidd, I mean, they're they're really like running the plays and really finding the guys and really getting everybody involved. And I feel like if you truly watch the tape and, and dissect it and stuff, you'd see the difference. Um, you know, they were getting rebounds and, and stuff. It's just, it's just uh, like, I would have to show you the tape and have to point yeah, out like fair. different, you know what I mean? But essentially just setting 
plays and and really getting people involved compared to just like shooting so compared to you compared to me someone that you know the game of basketball i'm a fan looking from the outside in do you miss the old style of basketball or do you think the new style of basketball is exciting because it's definitely good for the brand of basketball because people are seeing these high scores and seeing three points seeing steph curry pull up from half from like i said someone outside looking in seeing the highlights on sports night you're looking at that going holy shit I got to tune in and watch that. But you, who I'm assuming likes the X's and O's. Uh, no, or is that too much? Not necessarily. That? I mean, like, I'm just, uh, I guess I'm just being a hard critic right now. Well, but I, I like both. You know, I, I like the how the game back in the day was like, you know, um, it was a lot more slowed down, I yeah. guess you could say. And now it's more fast paced. Like, teams are scoring like 140 points. Like, and that's a normal, a current thing. Yeah. You know, and that was a big deal back then and stuff. But I, I like it. I think it's good for, you know, um, it's good for the future and the future generation of where things are going. People are more athletic. You know, you're seeing that probably in all sports. I mean, oh, yeah. essentially with the better training and, and the better, you know, people are more informed about the information that will make them an elite athlete mm. in whatever sport it is. So I find well, that. Yeah. One thing I think basketball also has going for it that we probably won't touch on that because you and I probably don't know much about it, but concussions. Basketball and other in football and hockey and rugby and you know not probably not baseball but in other, a lot of other sports concussions are a huge thing right now because the science is coming out cte is a thing basketball i feel doesn't have that problem problem yeah no There's nothing I, I don't think i ever had a concussion or I'm, i might have had almost a concussion maybe but like fortunately knock on wood i haven't had a concussion so yeah, yeah. exactly uh but yeah man like do you know i don't know much about it unfortunately so i can't have, really have you seen the movie with will smith concussion where he plays that doctor and he finds out that the nfl is damn I prone to concussions that. watch that tonight that. i think it's just called yeah. concussion slacking cte i forget what cte stands for but essentially back in the early 2000s he determined that sports where there's head trauma or head contact on a on every play it can cause a lot of damage to your brain in the future almost like your knees yeah. but in the future so they had these players that were going through the nfl they were tired they were 35 years old when they were done playing and then by the time they're like 45 50 they started getting crazy headaches and then their whole body melted down and they became addicted to drugs and suicide came into play anyways it's a, it's a crazy movie very uh, insightful to the to the science world of sports but like I said, I don't think basketball has that problem. Hockey has no, that no, problem due to the fact that it's getting quicker. Oh, definitely. Hockey like, does for sure. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and they can have as much uh, protective gear as possible, but like that's not really, yeah. you know, like you said, it's getting quicker. Well, every sport is getting quicker, man. Like outside of sports, the training of the actual athletes, like personal training, that's a huge thing now. If you're a professional athlete, if I'm a professional athlete, as soon as the season's over, you're finding the best person to make sure that your body's in tip top shape for the next year. Because if you're not, you're going to have a job replaced by someone else next year. You're not going to be on the team unless you're a world-class athlete, but it's crazy how much, uh, how much money is out there for these personal trainers to, to train these guys in the summer and they're getting better. They're getting quicker. They're getting faster. They're getting smarter. It's, it's quite impressive. Fitness as a whole, well, you know, you go to the gym. Yeah. That gym is packed all the time. It's crazy. Especially like the last couple of, of days but the last week essentially because it's the new year yeah that's you, fair you, you know and you can't look at it like you got to look at it in a positive way like look i was there once you know what i mean let's hope that they can continue to go i know it's busy and stuff you know but that's good life's fault they need to make another gym you know what yeah. i mean especially up around this area you know yeah. it'd be nice if they had like something maybe i don't know what do you think what you know the, the new canadian the old canadian tire that they knocked oh, down there oh yeah that would be sick there's nothing there and it's there. close. I could run there, walk there. Yeah, I would go to that gym all the time. But I remember going to that, the one that we go to right now back in high school. Not that, it wasn't, I remember going like at five, six o'clock busy times mm -hmm. and it wasn't as busy as yesterday at five o'clock. It was yeah, packed. Yeah. You oh couldn't get a, you couldn't get a machine. Yeah, and it's so frustrating too because you just want to go there and get your stuff done. You know yeah. what I mean? And I feel so bad walking around different people and just like, oh, excuse me, sorry. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's really annoying and it makes you want to just like change up your whole schedule, but you shouldn't have to do that. One thing I'm trying to do, even though I already spent the money, so I got to go to the gym, but home workout, get like a yoga mat, get some bands. I don't know. But home workout's another possibility. If, if you and I are ever in the financial position, I'd love to get like a home gym. Yeah, that'd be sick, man. Think about it. You only need a squat rack, some dumbbells. What else do you need? Back, chest, 
legs. I guess that's what the squat rack. Yeah, you could just you know with the squat rack you could do so much. Yeah, you could do so much. I guess like if it were just with the bar itself. Yeah, you know you can do hit the three main things: the deadlift, squats, and yeah, bench press. So. And that's the thing also about the gym is people don't have time. Well, that's their excuse. They'll say, I got to go to the gym, but I don't. I don't have time. I got to take care of the kids. I got the job. Yeah. I got the wife. Luckily, either of us have kids. <laughs> Shout out to that. Well, not that we know of. No, not that I know <laughs> of. Thank God. Um, do you want to talk about any? I know you brought the notes there. Like, I'm more than happy to, to talk about whatever you brought. I know you said you do want to talk about the future. Uh, yeah, no. Um, what do you yeah, got planned? So, so for the future, I guess, like with my photography, I guess, like, um, you know, like the modeling thing of it. Um I guess in 2018, I did a lot of uh, commercial kind of stuff where it, um, I was advertising brands, you know, East Coast Lifestyle, um, you know, Trev Clothes and Art pays me just to name a couple. Yeah. Um, but in the new year, you know, I'm still going to represent, you know, some of those guys because, you know, I, I really respect those guys. But uh, outside of that, I want to do really creative type of work. You know, I want to do, you know... Um, I guess you could say authentic, you know, type of work, you know, so I, I really got to do my research and, and try to like, and when I say that, I mean like more so than just clicking the picture, you know, like more so, uh, you know, like pictures that you would look at it and it would give you some type of feeling or you would, you Ooh. know, it would, you know, okay, some type of emotion. I know it's, I don't want to get too deep because I know <laughs> this is where we're, we're not trying to go there with the show, but uh, I guess that's where I want to go with that. Okay. Um, so you want to be a photographer for other different brands in and around the city or you want to be no, in the no, photos? No, 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 Like, uh, I would essentially work with, uh, other photographers in the city. Okay. Um, not so much brands. Like, as I said, those three brands, yeah. you know, I have so much respect for Like I'll always yeah. be a part and support that. And, uh, you know, I got an agent, um, her name's Salitha. And Salitha. She's, she's awesome. Yeah. Salitha. Where's she uh, from here? Sully Management's Productions. No, she's from, uh, down south somewhere. Okay. Right? I'm so bad. I can't remember her. <laughs> The country that she's from, from. It starts with a B. Uh, it's not Bermuda or nothing like that. Oh, so I would love to go to Bermuda. Somewhere really nice on there. But uh, she has my best interest. She yeah. helps me out. Um, I do a lot of runway stuff with her. I actually done acting. I got into acting last year. And oh, I yeah. I do something and pursue that in uh, 2019. Cool. Um, I was in a show that actually coming out this month called Digstown. I Digstown. Got, Digstown. Yeah, okay. I was in that in Hennessy Cast, and that was nice. And uh, there was actually Stage Mother was another movie I was in briefly. And I got to meet Lucy Liu briefly. Look at you. Yeah, no, I know. And this was just like, and the thing is, like, I, I feel like, you know, the future holds so much, um, so much potential. Because, like, if I really think about the time that I'm putting into it, I could do so much harder and so much more stuff, you know. Yeah. And these opportunities present themselves, really. And it feels like you're only putting 80% in when really if you put in 100, you know, yeah. who knows where you could be. Do you ever feel like you're spreading yourself too thin at, thin at times? I feel that way. You're putting it's yourself funny. in too many. Well, yeah. oh, okay, that's what you mean, putting yourself in too many. Like when I think of the high button, most people just think, oh, it's, it's a podcast, which it is. But in my head, I want it to be so much more. And yes. I could focus on sales emails. I can focus on video content. I could focus on a million different things and not really focus on the podcast. So when I come to these stages of the high button, I find myself not focusing on one thing as much as I should be because it could lose its, you know, its, its, its power. The podcast isn't going to be as good because I don't focus on it as much. But then the video content's not going to be as good because I'm not focusing as much on it. You know what I mean? So sometimes I find myself spreading too thin. And when I listen to you and you want to do this, you want to do that, you want to do this. I don't know. It's just a problem that I have. So I'm just asking if you ever come across that problem. Oh, for sure. And like, I, I'm still coming across that problem. You know, yeah. I, I've, I've found so many things that I've done that I enjoyed, you know, like I, I did just to mention a few things that I did, like, uh, you know, like, cutting hair and you know a, a, a barber yeah um and sushi i used to make sushi up did in you like i did all kinds of different kind of hustles side hustles i guess you could say just to you know try to find myself you yeah. know and uh i'm still doing that and i, I realized that i like the photography i like the modeling stuff i like to connect and the acting yeah. um you know i see what you're saying with spreading yourself thin uh i definitely think that you need to find something that you're that you really like that you're really good at yeah. something that you're better at the average person obviously and uh just excel with that yeah excel with that essentially and and you know but you know sometimes when i find like i'm branching out too much places i'll just have to like you know kind of gather myself and say okay what do i really want yeah you know what i mean and if that means you know stop doing this kind of thing or stop doing that kind of thing i'll stop doing it just because you can't like you said sell yourself short and go 
try to branch out in too many things. But I think how you find those avenues is the side hustle, like you said. If you're working the nine to five at the bank and you hate it, but you have a side hustle, that could be your thing that one day turns into your nine to five. That's what I'm hoping with this, at least. Oh. I like it. I'm not making a lot of money at it right now, but I'm passionate about it. I work hard at it. And then hopefully one day it'll be the nine to five. You know what I mean? And I respect that 100 percent, bro. Well, because to be honest, I'm doing the nine to five. And like, as you said, I was doing the bank and I hate I I like the bank because I got to help like a lot of people but at the same time i just wasn't liking what i was doing on the day-to-day thing and i'm blessed now that i'm enjoying what i'm doing at nscc and that's a nine to five and that hustle but like you said i want to get to a point where you know i'm my nine to five yeah i'm my 24 hour you know yeah. that's it's just me and it's just like you you know yeah. and we'll be you know maybe we can look back at this someday well i'm hoping definitely definitely we'll, we'll look laugh back about at it someday and laugh about this and yeah you know but that's where it starts that's where it begins and i love how you're you know you have the tenacity to go and make make this show something you know it's, that's all it is he's gonna love it it's all it is i remember i hate i worked at the bank too i was at scotia bank i got fired oh shit. Uh, and i hated it so much but that drive and that hate I just channeled it towards something that I loved, which was this. You know, I was frustrated. I was like, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to sit here and just be pissed at myself? No. So I just took that energy and just bought a couple microphones and said, hey, come over. Let's talk. And the next thing you know, you and I are sitting here. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's so, a snap of the finger. It's nothing. And then it just turns into something somehow. Next thing you know, I'm talking to guys in the NHL. How did I that see happen? That, man. I you know see what I mean? That. One and day that. you're going to, who knows? Yeah, you're going to be in a, in a photo shoot with Leonardo DiCaprio. Who fucking knows? Ah. It's just, I'm just saying, like, don't don't sell yourself short. Anything could happen. No, who fucking knows? Definitely, bro. And I feel like now that we're getting older, we'll go back to the start of the show, 10 years yeah. since we got out of high school. And, you know, I just feel like, you know, we're, we're, um, we're adults. We're almost 30 years old. Like, we got to get it together. And yeah. we're, we're, we are we don't want to let time waste us by. We don't got no kids holding us down. You know, no baby <laughs> mamas or nothing like that. That's a huge thing, man. People, oh, man. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say I got friends either, too. Because I got a lot of friends with, you know, kids and that. But I don't know how. Their kids yeah. and stuff. But at the same time, like, you know, it's just, it's not my time to do that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm doing that on purpose. Like, I, 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 you know, yeah, I, yeah, my yeah. life is planned out. Like, a lot of people say you're getting older and it sucks. I'm going to tell you the truth right now, man. I love getting older because I'm getting wiser. Each and every day I'm learning something. I'm like, oh, that's how you do that? Oh, that's how you do that? Oh, your my body's getting a little sore? Okay, well, here's how you fix it. I just love, the, the older I get, the more knowledge I gain and I'm able to apply it to my life and the, the happier I get. Like, last, I don't know, I started going to the gym six months ago. The six months before that... I don't know. I just wasn't in the best shape, wasn't happy, wasn't flexible. And then I start going to the gym, start figuring things out for myself. And then you just become happy. It's all that's, at least I don't know about you, but for me, I just want to be happy, man. And I'm figuring it out day by day. Oh, definitely, man. Um, you know, th- me too, man. Just ha- ha- be happy in whatever you do and, and try to, you know, bring some positivity upon other people and try to help people when you can. You know what else is for cool? Sure. What's that? How, when was the last time you had a conversation with someone for 30 minutes? Just so we were 30 minutes in. We're 30 minutes we're thir- in. Right but, now? but you know what I mean? That's the wow. thing I kind of like about it is let's say you, like you and I were at the gym the other day. I ran into you. How long did we talk for? 45 seconds? Yeah. A minute? Yeah. Like that's great and all, but you got to think about it on a day to day basis. That's what most people are doing every single day 45 seconds a minute, unless you're in a meeting for five minutes, 10 minutes. But there's something about sitting down with a person for an hour and getting into their mind that I'm just obsessed with. Love it. Yeah, man. Just like sitting down, just kicking it. I love how you got you had the incense going and the candles, and you know, it's it's it makes me feel comfortable. This chair is comfy. That's the thing I struggle with in this is making people feel comfortable right off the bat because people get nervous a little yeah, when they first sure. come in. For sure. So I'm trying to like the incense, the candle, and the water. That's the key to it. Make people feel comfortable right off the bat. But yeah, it's sure. all the learning curve. And, and I love how we just came in. We got to it. There was no real real like prepping. We just went with the flow you know obviously I, I brought notes just to be prepared in case you wanted to ask me some specific questions i feel bad now do you want me to ask uh, you some no no questions? no brother no 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 like i mean no <laughs> you don't have to ask me nothing like that bro that's just so i just one of those type of people where i, I just always want to be prepared no, i don't want to come here and not you know not know what to do yeah. and be in a situation where like uh, on the hot seat but no i felt real comfortable this was just it's a common misconception when people come on for the first time they're like okay so you're ready for the interview like i'm not an interviewer i just like to have a conversation i think remember what i told you when you first came on like how i had the notes and i was ready for the questions and i, I myself was nervous 
Like I, yeah. I, I wasn't listening to what you're saying. I was nervous back then too, man. You know what you I mean? mean? For the viewers, like I, we, we were, we tried this. When was it? How long oh, was man, it? The locals, yes. The locals. I was on this. That was cool though. I remember we kept having to go back, go back, go back. I'm glad like this show we won't have to do that because it's just so naturally flown. But I remember I kept messing up. And that's a per that's a perfect example of how I like to get old because I'm learning from my mistakes. The locals wasn't a mistake, but I learned from what I didn't like about it. You know what I mean? No, man. And, and then you just keep going. And that's cool. And you were doing that back then, and you're doing it now, and you're gonna go somewhere with it because you're being consistent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And success will be there. You know, success is there. Oh, that's the key to it. I think just consistency, man. Just be consistent. Yeah. So what's the next step for you? The next consistent step for you? I know you um, say you want to branch out, but how is the creative community here? Uh, it's, it's really good. I guess it's kind of small compared to like the grand scale of things. Like yeah. if you look at like bigger cities, obviously like Toronto, Montreal and yeah. Ottawa and stuff. But I think for Atlantic, there's so much talent here in Atlantic. In what Canada. sense? In like everything. photography? In everything. everything. I feel like um, the Maritimes has a lot of good talent. You know what I mean? That kind of gets overshadowed because, you know, we're such a small, you know what I mean? We're barely cracking a million people. Are we? Yeah, we're about 964. The province 000. or the city? The whole province of Nova Scotia. I'm just wow. speaking numbers. N numbers. And obviously, we're the biggest province. Yeah. Like the biggest city in the province. Biggest city. In the I don't province. know how many people are in the city. I'm going to say half a mil, 500,000 um, less. I would like to think half a mil, but realistically, probably like maybe 350. Yeah. Maybe four. Like if you're talking about HRM, like yeah. with everything included. What are some maybe like problems that you face on a day-to-day -day basis that you say you want to have this second part of your life be more creative? What are some problems that you face in order to get that dream off the ground? Um, some problems I face to get the dream off the ground. Um, I guess some days you, you have really tough days and you just really, you don't want to, you know, go do the things that you have to do. You have to do mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. And the thing is, um, when, when I have days like that, I just try to like find inspiration in something, you know, I have to have like a why, like, why am I doing this? You so you know? have to and find that, a why. Yeah. And that goes back to like your family, you know, and your upcoming, you know, like everybody has their own, you know, tough things that they've went through when they're growing up and stuff. No one had a perfect life. No one had a silver spoon to them. You know, if you really think about it and I just feel like you always have to dig back to go there and, and dig deep when you're th going through tough times and mm -hmm. you know, you're losing faith and chasing where you want to be, I guess you could say. So just getting through tough days is the toughest part about it. I, yeah. Getting through the tough days, I think. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, let me think of, yeah, I would say that's fair. Say, yeah. A lot of it comes down to, I know myself, whenever I'm going through something and let's say like a sales email, for example, and out of the sales email, the goal is obviously to make money. You want money from these people to promote a brand. But if you can switch from your mindset to doing it for an actual favor, like if you can switch it from your mind of going, I need money to your heart of actually thinking, I'm, I'm going to try to help you. I find that helps me a lot. So whenever I get on a sales call and they're like, well, you know, your, your main goal is money. And then my response is no, my main goal is to help you. Even though it, it's hard to change people's mind. A lot, a lot of us are we're out for the money. It's hard to, it's hard. It's hard yeah, out here. You know, sure, everyone man. make your money, do what you have to do. And it's hard to change people's mind. But I find if I'm able to change my mindset to think with my heart, if that makes sense, Definitely. I find that makes it a lot easier because you actually want to help someone. If I actually sit down and want to help you, it feels good for me. You know and what I mean? I appreciate that, bro. And, and I definitely can contest where you're coming from because, like, as I said, you know, even as the modeling and stuff, like, the, the gig, you know what I mean? Like, most of the time, you're just doing it to get the exposure and to get some clothes, you know what I mean? The, you know, other times, you're, you know, you're getting a hundred, couple hundred bucks and different kind of stuff. But, yeah. I mean, that money is not consistent. No. And that's why you have to have that other you know, that, you know, your main hustle, you know, why, you know, you're nine to five, I guess you could say per se. And, uh, you know, just work, work towards it, you know, work through the, the tough days where you feel like you can't do it. Just try to find inspiration yeah. because, you know, like you said, consistency. And that's what, you know, I'm coming to now. I can't expect things to blow up in a year. I can't expect things to blow up in three years, maybe five years. I don't, I don't know. I just know that I got to be consistent with it and I got to do it on a day to day basis and yeah. that's what it comes down to. I know that it will eventually come. Yeah. I can't control when it will come. I yeah. guess I can work harder and it will come sooner. What are your, what do you, like, do you have any plans to be more consistent? Like I have plans set in place for this to be more consistent. Do you, do you have any ideas or anything like that that you want to chuck out there? 
to like, be more consistent like with respect to like my side like the the modeling and stuff yeah like that kind of stuff like do you want to yeah, get man I, w- I just want to utilize my day so i want to wake up like i'm not really a morning person That's but fair. i want to try to be a morning person if that makes sense like That's i want to utilize my morning you know even if i'm like meditate for like 20 minutes you know that that's good that's allow my mind to like rest and, and kind of start a good day think about things you're thankful for, uh, for in the beginning of your day just like i know these sound kind of cheesy but these are these are serious things that you could use to just not have a bad day and turn it into like a, a great day most people struggle with that yeah yeah it's tough sometimes people are too hard on themselves you know i'm hard on myself sometimes i'm sure you are any new year's resolution speaking of being hard on yourself that's mine just be less hard on yourself ah new year's resolution uh not so much not so much be the same you really thought no just improve me i guess like every area you know what i mean um you know just you know lift more weight at the gym i I guess you could say like eat healthier stuff like that um you know and run with it you seem to know a lot of people at the gym every time i see you you're always talking to people i know where does that come from it's just being consistent and going all the time you see people and then like you'll eventually get in scenarios where you have to talk to people again you know i'm a i'm not an introvert i'm an extrovert yeah so you know what i mean i i don't mind talking to people engaging in conversations and stuff and people just people come up it's like a social social thing sometimes and i love it because i got my headphones now my wireless beats headphones (laughs) i got for christmas hey no free plugs don't no plugs i'm joking i'm joking i can leave my phone downstairs and still you know do my squats but i I keep those on my heads now and i try to stay focused because as much as i like talking to people i'm trying to get my my workout done i'm trying to get in and get out man like it's like an hour 45 minutes you want to be in and out how long are you there yeah like maybe like hour 15 maybe hour 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 30 because i i like i really take my time to stretch bro before or after before and after more so before though um i really stress just to you know prepare myself i guess you know I, i'm getting older and stuff i don't want to get yeah. an injury you know i got bad knees bro man that would so, be the worst to get an injury while you're working out at the gym i don't lift anything above 60 no, pounds no no i i don't i think i looked over you were you were lifting no maybe maybe, maybe um, 70 but yeah. i don't lift much like i'll go in there just like keep the tone I don't, i'm not looking to be huge i'm just looking to keep a little muscle but the stretching thing is something i've been doing a lot more after not before i really should be doing it before i mean as long as you're doing it it doesn't matter yeah. if it's before or after i just do it before and after just i guess because like i'm, I'm f- <laughs> just you got ocd to. like that yeah. i just want to get i just want to stretch because again i've been injured before and it's not good and you know with my messed up knees and stuff i don't want to do you since so now that you have the injured knee how do you work out the legs do you squat at all or do you just do the machines to work out the legs yeah i can still i can still squat i just probably that's my strength is my my legs, legs. yeah i can probably squat 400 405 yeah Serious? honestly God, yeah. Do, you need a, do you need a spotter when you do anything um, like that i can get it for sure for for once i can get it for sure for once on Man. any given day um but it's, it would be nice to have a squatter but just you know i wear a belt just yeah. hanging out but like i shouldn't be you know i only weigh like maybe 175 pounds so i gotta be chill on my knees man but i just i i don't and that's why i stress so much because i don't want to i want to still be able to lift heavy you know yeah. what i mean i don't want that to limit me that's something that i love going to the gym you know yeah. going and lifting the heavy weight you know yeah. what i mean for my size and that feels good to me so i that's why i stretch and, and and try to prepare and try to eat right and do the right things and that's good what about yeah. cardio do you run like i feel if you have a bad knees or do you go do you go on the bike like how how would you do cardio? Yeah, I go I go on the bike. Um, I don't run. I walk per se because I feel like the running would just be. That's stair climber. Stair climber. Man, dope. the stair climber is one of the hardest that. things in the gym. You think so? Oh my god, man! I can't I can't last ten minutes on that thing. Really? It is so tough. I'm sitting there next to girls and they're just killing it, and I'm just dying up the stairs. I got all that. All the girls go on the on the. Do you know offhand what level you put it on? Like six. You could do more than ten minutes. I believe in you. If I see you at the gym next time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be no. like, yo. How about this? Next time we're at the gym, we'll go on the stair climber together. Yeah, we'll max and I'll it motivate up. you enough. I'll motivate you enough to get, do more than ten minutes because I know you can do more than ten minutes. Maybe I. You know what it is with me in the gym? I get bored. If I'm on the treadmill or the bike, I'm bored. It's like I know I should be here. I know I should be doing this cardio but just like i'm fucking bored i'll try to listen to a podcast i'll try to watch the tv i just get bored watch like a youtube you know watch your bring my phone or something yeah that's pretty chill that would keep you but i think that's what i like about the lifting weights is that it's short 
period. Like if I'm lifting shoulders, all right, it's going to be 45 seconds of hard work and then you can chill for a sec. The yeah. thing about the treadmill or the bike, it's like, okay, this is going to be 30 minutes of the same thing. And my mind just goes crazy. Well, I got a problem with that. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, back when I used to smoke weed and work out, some of the best cardio exercises I've ever had because your mind is spinning. When you're, when I smoked, it, it, my mind just, it focused on one thing. I wasn't all over the place. I was focused when I, I, you know, have a couple hits of the, the joint and I'd go in the gym and I'd run for an hour and a half on the treadmill. Just incredible focus. Same with lifting weights. Mm-hmm. Anyways, this was back in British Columbia. Have you ever been out there when they got the weed out there? I've been in British Columbia with basketball with the Mun team. We yeah. Went out there. We had a tournament out there in uh, UBC, and uh, it was so nice. I was like 21. I 21? Was 21. Beautiful, beautiful out there. So nice. And I got, I, I, yeah. You got a job. You don't have to say anything. I get yeah. it. You don't want anyone to hear <laughs> No, no, no. Like, this was back when I uh, when I was in BC, like, when I was playing ball and stuff. But it was a good time. There's a lot of smoke out there. Uh, BC, there's yeah. a lot of smoke here now like well it's illegal know, the, yeah it's crazy it's crazy bro do you ever think of that and you think back of high school like <laughs> it being like that I don't it's, it's like i it's never insane. thought it would happen but that's an that's a whole other topic that's a you have a job right now don't you a nine to five yeah are yeah, you yeah. able to talk about it for a sec yeah no i'll talk about it i'll uh, keep it real because um, it's, it's record i could smoke recreational that's true i never bro. even thought about that you don't yeah, even have there's I don't no even have to hide nothing look if i want to smoke recreational that's better than you know uh drinking i get it's it's technically better for you you know what i mean and i'm not out here doing that and operating in a vehicle or, or doing anything i shouldn't be doing you know what i mean if i'm recreational at home you know and i want to watch a good movie you know my i like uh suspenseful movies i'm in a thriller suspense like uh are you into that bird box did you hear it no what's that <laughs> what's bird box <laughs> you got to explain <laughs> For, the, for those that don't know, Bird Box is this new movie that came out on Netflix. Love it. And bef- I don't want to give too much information about it, but uh, basically it's just, it's a thriller. It's a, there's something that makes people want to harm themselves that's going around and every, and you can't see it. I don't know. I don't want to. Just keep talking. I just want to look it up. Yeah, look it up. Um, but it's actually a crazy movie. Like, it's kind of like Shutter Island. Like, it's one of those movies that make you think. Like, oh, when uh, they, Sandra Bullock has the Sandra thing over Bullock, her eyes. Sandra Bullock has the thing. Over her eyes, and she goes down a river for two days. Is that is it Sandra Bullock? Yeah, Sandra Bullock. Yeah, yeah it's nice. a, that's a meme right now. Yeah, like with her over the eyes. Yeah, yeah I love it. I that's love on it. Netflix. That movie. Some of the memes are are hilarious. They're like, you know, uh, when you see your bros doing something they shouldn't be doing, like, <laughs> and, or like, you know, certain things like that will make people want to take off their blind phones. Like I've been seeing the most funniest memes when it comes to that. Oh my god. All right, well that's what I'm doing. I, I probably watch a movie every night. Yeah, watch oh, yeah. Bird Box. Watch Bird Box tonight, and I'll watch what that concussion with Will. Smith? Oh, concussion! Yeah, with concussion. Will Smith. Cool. And then we'll talk again, and then we'll see what, what we liked about the movie. You gotta yeah, remember, though. Man. And I'm surprised you never heard too much about this because this is just like I thought it was blowing up. I see, that, like, that's why I do the podcast. Cause people tell me shit. I really don't. I don't really know that. I don't know a lot. This is my form of education. I didn't really pay attention in school. So when people come on here, I listen. Yeah. yeah if, so if you want to drop some knowledge on me really quick about math or spelling or something, let no, me know. No, no, <laughs> not at all. Like, not at all, man. I was just an average student in all school. I just did what I had to do to get by. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I. That's how I was in high school. Were you Were you really involved in high school, you think? Were you care Academically? About yeah, like, were you? No. Well, here, okay, okay, here's how involved academically I was in school. I hate telling this, but... No, it's all good. I got to tell it because this is my life. I'm not hiding <laughs> anything. So, me and Tyler Scott, we were in Foundations Math together. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Wasn't we, Zach in that? Yeah, Zach, <laughs> yeah. And Kike was in it, I'm pretty sure, too. <laughs> all my buddies. All my so, high school bros. My parents, ah, they're not going to listen. It's so, good. there's one day, it's probably the beginning of school, so it's like September, and we're in this math class, and it's right by the window in the back of the school, right next to the basketball courts, and me and Tyler are sitting next to each other. And there's this kid in gym class trying to do a layup, like, he, he doesn't know how to do it, he's short, he's a little bit overweight, like, he just doesn't need, and Snook wasn't telling him how to do it, like, Snook was in the back, so <laughs> me and Tyler are just looking at this poor kid, like, God damn it, someone has to teach him how to do a layup. So, Tyler goes to me, he goes, you won't do it. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, you won't go out there and tell him how to do a layup. And I'm like, 
<laughs> yeah, I will. So in the middle of class, I put my hand up. I go, excuse me, miss. Uh, do you mind if I use the washroom? She goes, all right, hurry up. So I run outside to the basketball court in the middle of class. And I go, listen, man, this is how you do the layup. And then Tyler's Tyler, he goes, hey, everyone look outside. It's Justin. <laughs> and I'm out there That's on the basketball the court dude. giving this kid lay, layup lessons. And of course, the teacher probably, teacher probably comes over. Like, the teacher comes uh, back. So I come back in the class and Justin go to the office. So then I had to go to the office. But that's just the shit you do when you're a kid. Oh, man. I had some funny times <laughs> in high school. We could, get, we could get to talking. But I remember one time specifically, I remember 420. I remember it was grade 11 and it was 420. It was April 20th, you know, and everybody knows that's a big day for people getting smoking and, yeah. and stuff. So I remember that day it, there was a decision I had because I had a free, I think it was like a Thursday and I had a, a free block like right yeah. before the 10 o'clock. Those were the best thing ever. Those were the best things you get to sleep in, right? So I got to school around, you know, 10 o'clock. It was right before my class. And, um, I remember um, someone, so I forget, you know, under not under the stairs, but over by the bridge area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and someone was smoking. They were like, hey, you want something? I was like, man, it's 420, man. You know, screw it. I'll do it. So I did it. And then I was planning on going to class. But what had happened was this bus pulled up in, fr- in front of the West. That was like a... Um, the yellow bus? No, it wasn't a yellow bus. Metro Transit? It, it was a Metro Transit because it was like a special day, apparently, that day where it was like a field trip. Like a high school field trip. <laughs> and there was a bunch of different grades. So there was grade 10, 11, and 12 all going. And if you were taking that particular class, I forget what it was, maybe like... Oceans? Something like, yeah, maybe something like that or something. It was over in the sportsplex. But I remember there was a decision I made. I was like, to get on that bus or not? And I was <laughs> Like to sneak on? No, just go on. Like, because I, I think I had... or Yeah, I might have... I would have had to sneak on, actually, because I never <laughs> took Oceans. That makes sense now. So, yeah, I was... This, I had the decision to either go to class or get on this bus with these other students i would know i'd get back by the end of the day yeah so i got on the bus and i was scared i smell like weed and i'm looking around and my eyes always get red whenever i get high so i'm just like you know anyways i went and did it it was a fun day we were running around there in uh sport check or sports, sports flex sports, sports plex yeah, yeah. Now i'm all cut on my words and it was just it was hilarious so yeah there's a lot of funny times but Oh, like, I feel yeah. bad. Did you get in, in school suspension or something for doing that? No, it was just don't do it again, please. And I was like, all right. Did you get caught? I never got caught to this day. I remember there was track and field, and it was Thursday, no, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But sometimes your event was only on a Wednesday, but I still wanted to miss school Thursday, Friday. So yeah. I would just jump on the bus anyways and be like, yeah, I got an event around 2 o'clock today. And I had nothing. I just wanted to go and hang out and flirt with girls. Yeah, so exactly. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I, I only competed on Wednesday. I was in 200-meter race or whatever. And then Thursday, Friday, I'd just be at track and field hanging out with my friends That's from other dope, schools. man. That's dope. I don't think I did track and field <clears throat> in high school. I should have. Oh. I, I did it in junior high and elementary, but I should have did something. I was always good in the long jump. I was a long jump. Man, anything to get out of class back in the day, I'd do. I know, man. Anything. I know. You played hockey, you played hockey obviously, in, in high school. Yeah, well, hockey got me out of a lot of things. I remember when you're in hockey and you play a high level, you got to go to these schools, like elementary schools, because you're a role model. You go, like, oh, yeah, you know, I play hockey. And the coaches, they tell you, like, stay in school, because if you don't, you can't play hockey. And just the biggest lie. Yeah. Like, growing yeah, up yeah. as a kid, you're just like, well, I better get good grades, because if I don't get good grades, I can't play hockey. I'm sure that is true for the NCAA route. Yeah. Like, going that route, you definitely need good grades, but playing, like, junior hockey around here, you don't. I feel like I shouldn't be saying that for kids listening. Fuck. No, Whatever, no, kids, no. Like, kids get good grades, stay in school, don't do what I did. Get good grades, so you have both options. You know, what absolutely. I mean? So you know that that works for you. I wasn't really good per se in school. I was, like I just said, average student. You know what I mean? Um, did I get suspended in high school? I think for fighting. Yeah, in grade eleven, I got. There was always suspended. fights at our school. Yeah, I remember there was one fight. Uh, that well, the fight I was in. Um, we ended up there was like a few people following us, and we were going down to like uh past the library across the street across lacewood over to like that playground yeah you know where i'm talking about that playground past I, lacewood yeah so you know how oh, you walk down yeah yeah that's yeah. where f- the other fight was okay yeah i know yeah, where that, exactly i know where you so mean. Yeah, i yeah, remember yeah. there was like maybe five ten fifteen then twenty thirty and then like as we were going further the crowd just grew and i remember i just like had to square off i was like yeah you know like whatever and uh, i remember i got suspended for that just because they found out afterwards you know the cops and stuff ended up coming because there's so many people isn't that but, interesting how you get suspended for that even though it's not on school property yeah it's not during school hours but yet you still get suspended 
Yeah, Isn't that and, weird? And you want to know the, the, the most stupidest thing about that was the fight was just stupid because it was just, it all started over like... A girl? Uh, not even that. No, it was just like, why are you looking at me? I'm not looking at you. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, you know, don't look at me. Frig, <laughs> off, frig off. What are you talking about? You can see me after school. All right. Da, da, da. Like, that's how it went. That's but high school. That's high school for you, man. That's high school for you. I never got in a fight in high you school. You live and you learn. You live and you learn. No, like, it's, you know, and I got in a fight in my first year of university. Wow. Second year. First year, second year, second year. And that was just, that was actually, I was sticking up for a girl. Like, she was running around with her skirt almost halfway up. And some guy was, like, pointing at her and being like, yeah, take off your skirt. And I was like, shut up, you perv. And then... She didn't know what was going on because she was so drunk. And he's like, what are you talking about? And then I just was like, man, you're a pervert. Like, why are you saying this stuff? And, like, I could tell he wasn't from, yeah. can't, you know. And I was just like, man, you're, you're in. And then we just started scrapping and stuff. And I remember my buddy tried to, because I wasn't, I I had some drinks. I, this was, actually, this might have been, yeah, this was second year, third year. I don't know. I remember we were watching a volleyball game. And my buddy was driving because he was so he was sober. I was drinking, and he had my keys to my car, so he was about to leave. And then the cops knocked on the window, like knock, 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 knock. He rolled it down. He's like, "Y'all, you guys get out," you know. But it wasn't. I didn't get charged or nothing. It was just like, you know. Yeah, I was gonna. That was my next question. I got no charges. Yeah, like what happens when you get in a fight in university? Like they can't suspend you. No, no, they just. You're a grown man at the time. Yeah, they just kind of break you up and just say, "Are you gonna press charges?" No, like you know, we just got in a you know yeah. a little scuffle it was over you know it was over some that second one obviously in university i thought but maybe that was just my perspective i was drunk yeah. i was a guy, drunk a guy i know i'm not gonna say his name you know him too yeah. we're not gonna <laughs> mention his name but he got in a fight downtown and charges got pressed against him mm. and you know when you're a young guy 20 21 years old you get charges pressed against you for assault it wasn't assault with a deadly weapon or anything i think it was just assault um that's scary shit man yeah, having man. to go through all the stuff going through school paying bills and then you got this assault charge on top of all that that's some scary yeah, stuff and i'm pretty sure like i don't know too too much about it but i know you got to get like a pardon you got to go through all these procedures to be able to get that off your record to be able to yeah. you can't get no jobs really under, unless you're you know yeah. doing whatever but <clears throat> what he did he just wrote a apology letter the guy was just a big we knew of the guy that was pressing the charges and he was just a big pushover so he oh. requested that the, my friend write an apology letter and then once he wrote the letter i'm pretty sure you just it was dropped something yeah. something like that i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure it was something like that yeah that's crazy man i hope no one was seriously injured because i know some there was some stories where people were getting hit and dying oh you know man what I mean? you know downtown stuff that happened like five years ago some guy slipped and hit his head on yeah, the ice and crazy man crazy oh. you never would think that would happen if you think like uh, do you still go downtown i'm sure you go for a drink every now and then but yeah. not like you used to i'm assuming no like. no no not like i used to um, man I, yeah I, I try to stay you know if you go to toothy let's say on a saturday night you, another reunion place like there's certain places you can go to have a reunion with people you went to high school with you know because a lot of the a lot of people unfortunately are doing the same kind of stuff and like you know things stay the same for them um but yeah, I don't go as much, so I try to stay away from all that drama. And stuff. My, that's the thing. My point was, like, when you go out, like, when I was younger, I wasn't really smart at all about it. I wasn't, like, aware of my surroundings. If there was a, you know, if, like, obviously, if there's a fight going on to my right, I'm going to be aware of it and just kind of leave. But yeah. there was times where I just got obliterated, like, just so drunk, I didn't know, I blacked out. And that's a scary feeling as a as a kid, not knowing what happened the night out downtown. Yeah, I know yeah. You, us as guys, we laugh about it. It's, oh, you blacked out. That's hilarious. But man, shit could go down if you get blacked out downtown. Like you said, you can punch someone and kill someone. Yeah. Like it's more, so much stuff could happen. It's it's more serious, I'd say, just because like, I mean, I remember getting blacked out drunk in high school, you know what I mean? At the prom parties and stuff like that. But yeah. that's one thing because then at least you're at a party, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're technically safe, you, you know what I mean? And But when you're downtown and you're around all these different kind of people and stuff and yeah. people get are all drinking and stuff it could get real dangerous man crazy stuff all right we're coming up on an hour here man Jeez. I, I appreciate you coming on oh freak i can't i can't believe it went by so fast i'm Tell glad me. that you had me on your show man i'm glad we got to do this again um yeah i mean that's the thing i like about it it's an hour of just good conversation i like it that's dope man come back on anytime i love talking to you man appreciate it bro if appreciate you want to give a, a shout out to any co-workers friends family i always feel like the last minute is is your minute so if you want to say what you want to say say um, away geez uh nah i don't want to say a whole lot i just want to say i appreciate you having me on your show again you know we try to make this happen before 
and I know you got busy and, and you know, life didn't, life happened. But, uh, you know, we we got the opportunity to meet again and, and do this again and just chat. And uh, it's always good to see, you know, people that you see back in the day and they're doing <laughs> good stuff for themselves. But, uh, yeah, shout out to, you know, everybody. They know who they are. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out to everybody. I just wish good things upon everybody. And uh, I hope that 2019 brings you success in whatever you're doing, whatever your passion. And just keep going and just try to find that why why that was wise of you wise. to say find that yeah, why yeah, yeah. and and if you want to see my work go on um instagram all things in time is my uh alias people know me as all things in time and sorry i cut you off kind of there but i was gonna say and high school reunions coming up so everyone listening we'll see you at the high school reunion damn man yeah That's who's gonna organize that though man i had a guess who's gonna organize it i had a guess it would be remember patrick sala i went to prom yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i thought was he, he was the pri- was he the president he was he's a priest he's training to become a priest now i think is he yeah. i was gonna say he was the president in high school probably like, maybe but i know who you're talking about patrick well that's sala. why he was very organized and very on top of things so if i if we were talking about it the other day i was like if there's gonna be a guy that's gonna organize it i thought it would be him but I don't know. I don't even know how these things work. I kind of feel. I don't know either. I would have guessed like Emma. Emma always. Like, Emma Arsenal. Yeah, yeah that's she another one. Always, but she's know. in Toronto now. She's in Toronto. Do, do people she come, had to come do, home. Do people come back to Halifax for a 10-year reunion? Like if you lived in <sighs> Vancouver. And would you I come that, back? Would, like, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, I was trying to make it work in some degree. I mean, like some people look at it in a negative way, I guess. Like maybe the high school wasn't that great for them. That's you a know good what point. I mean? That's another thing. There was a lot of ups and downs in high school for me, myself, personally. And I feel like not everybody will want to come back That's and true. be there, to be honest with you. And, uh, but like, I think I would, I, I mean, yeah. like, why not see how people are doing? If there's mm-hmm. foods and if there's food there, if there's food involved, I'm there. And like, I do think they would charge, like, would they be like, yeah, 50 bucks admission. I would, I wouldn't I care, but like, do well, you think it would yeah. just be like a, if there's like an open bar and I pay 50 bucks, I'd do oh, it. Oh man, I would I ever. Could you bring yeah. guests? I wonder. Yeah, if you got a girl with you, bring a girl. Yeah, bring my girl, okay. I'm cool. just relating this to movies. Like if I watch a movie and there's a high school reunion, usually the guy or girl brings a date. And it's like, oh, this is my girlfriend. This is my boyfriend. Like, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, that makes I've sense. I've never been to one. That makes I don't sense. Know. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. Cool, man. Thanks for having me on. Peace. Everyone, Thanks. actually, no, every, everyone listening, go to all of our social media outlets. Like, subscribe, comment, Facebook, iTunes, YouTube. I think I said all of them. And actually, if you could go to our iTunes uh, page on the podcast app, give us a five-star rating or four-star or three. Just be honest. Nothing below three. And give us a comment. We love you guys. We are out. Peace.